Hey guys, it's Kat and I have a tutorial for you today on how to use an eye pad and eye ornament to make repeating patterns that can be used in all sorts of art projects. So say for example, I use this within ZBrush, the program. I can use them to create patterns for etching metals. So I might want to etch copper or silver. I can also create patterns that can be used as enamel, uh, I guess, designs. I could make stamps out of them. In full color, I could use these for scrapbooking papers. Uh, and last but not least, I also use them within SketchUp to mimic wallpaper. So I could create, for example, a, uh, you know, like this pattern right here, and then transfer it to my computer and then set that up as a repeating pattern. Uh, like for on that show, Fixer Upper, when she makes houses in a CAD program, uh, that's called SketchUp, and you could import these into those programs as repeating patterns. So it's a very flexible program to do all sorts of stuff. And anyway, just a, a sampling of some of the things that I've done. That one turned out really ugly. But as you can see, you can create interesting patterns that then become larger patterns and smaller patterns. Another thing that this program does is it creates mandalas. So if you were into doing this kind of design, I use these quite a bit in my jewelry. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So the main thing that you need to do is you need to download a piece of software called iOrnament from the App Store. So if you go into the Apple App Store and you just type iOrn, like that, iOrnament comes up here at the top. As of the making of this video, iOrnament is about, I think it's $3.99. It does come in a bundle which is the Eye Ornament Duo. It comes with Eye Ornament Crafter and then Eye Ornament, which will allow you to do some more designs and also make three-dimensional objects, which might be interesting. But it's maybe about $5 or so. There is an in-app purchase to put some add-ons, which include an eraser. So just know you're going to spend probably about 5 bucks for the bundle, um, and you'll enjoy it. So I wouldn't hesitate to pay the developer 5 bucks for his time. So we'll go ahead and launch Eye Ornament. And eye ornament um, will start out with a black background. The default is to come up something like this. Uh, I'm going to create a new design, so I'm just dismissing that uh, message there. But I want to use the settings button, and I'll, I'll describe your workspace first. On the left, you have a canvas where you can draw, and on the right, you have your tool palette. At the bottom of the tool palette on the left is a little button for settings. And when you click on that, it will allow you to bring up some things like symmetries on the upper right hand side so where it says show symmetries tap on faint and that will give you some little lines that'll work as guidelines we'll also give it a different background color so on this third icon over it brings up some thumbnails of uh, colors at the bottom so over on the side are some things like gold we won't work with those now but just tap on the white and it will change your background to white now the last thing we'll touch is this brush icon up here at the top and we want to touch on the size icon there's different things that you can choose to change but we just want to manipulate the size we also want to control it with pressure so i'm using an apple pencil and the apple pencil will allow you to use pressure on an ipad pro so that's important the other one i like to use is this middle one which is manual and that gives you a slider here on the side to control the size of your brush. But I'll switch it back to pressure for now, and then we'll leave effect strength just like it is. Close the box with the X, and now we're ready to draw. So let's go ahead and just draw something on the screen, just a little squiggle. Nothing fancy, but if I zoom in, one of the things you'll notice is that there's a little halo that's around this blue. So that shows me that I need to turn off blurriness. So on the sliders on the right, the very last one is blurriness. And we wanna move that all the way to the left and then try drawing a little bit more and see what happens. So that's a very sharp line and that's what we need to use for our designs. So now let's use the trash can at the lower right hand side of the tool palette and also switch to a black brush. So in the color palette at the top, let's choose the black. Now I'm going to play around with a, a different pattern. So you'll see a field of patterns down here in the middle uh, towards the bottom. 
but pick the one that is third down and third over. That's a triangular design. And the only guidelines we get here are little triangles, but let's just uh, kind of pinch the screen a little and move it over with two fingers. So you navigate by using two fingers and just moving the screen side to side like this. Then you can take your pen or your finger and then draw a little squiggle, something very simple like this. Next, we can go in and maybe make another squiggle. In fact, you could add some other little doodads to it and make something that looks like that. If I wanna see it further out, I can pinch the screen and see if that looks good when it, it is further out, or I can zoom in even zoom in further to work on details. So that looks okay. It's a little squiggly. I might redo this if I were doing this for real. Um, but let's say I like this one and I'm ready to turn this into a pattern. Well, there is something that's showing up here I need to get rid of before I export this pattern. You'll see that the triangles are still on the background and those are part of our show symmetries option. So let's go to the little gear in the lower left-hand corner and up at the top where it says show symmetries toggle the faint button so those turn off and then close this window. And now you can see that there are no triangles there. So let's get a good view. So it depends on how you're going to be using this particular piece. If I were just making something that I'm going to turn into a screen for screen printing, maybe some greeting cards or um, a screen for enameling, uh, you know, creating a sifting screen for enameling, then maybe something like this is fine. If I wanna see the whole screen and what is actually going to export, I need to hide this little tool palette. And the way I do that is on, on the uh, left-hand side of the tool palette, there's three vertical lines on the edge. And you're just gonna tap those and the tool palette will disappear or basically hide in the side. Now I can get a feel for my pattern. Do I wanna rotate it a little bit or do I wanna zoom in or zoom out? Maybe I want it a little bit larger. And that looks good. So I'm going to bring back my tool palette by tapping in the middle of this gray bar on the right hand side. And now I'm ready to export. So this time I need to tap on the second icon on the bottom, which is a camera and double check my preferences for export first. So the things that I'm looking for are the ones that say high res for images and ultra high resolution for tiles. So I want to make sure that those are turned on, which means that they're slid over to the right. Now click on this little X and I'm ready to export. So I tap on the camera again and then tap export image. And I have to decide how I'm going to use this. So let's say that I like this and I just wanna print it and I just happen to have a printer. I can click the print button down here at the bottom and you can see that it's recognizing my wireless printer that's in another room in the other area of the house. So I could just choose to print it as is. That's one thing I could do. Let's say that I don't have a printer though and I wanna send it to FedEx Kinko's. Well, I can email them. So if I have a business card or if I call them and get an email address, I could then tap on the camera, export image, and then this time choose the mail function. And with that, all I have to do is type in the email address of where I'm sending it. I do want this image to be pretty large. So I would tap the word image and then look to see if it's actual size. The rule of thumb on this is if it's less than 10 megabytes, you're fine to send it for most email systems. You also would probably want to type a little note that says, please print this at, um, you know, maybe 100% or you know, if I'm making a screen that's four and a half by five and a half, I might want that print area to be like that. I also want the image to be very dark if I'm printing a transparency, so they might have to adjust the density. So that's another option that's pretty easy, so I'll just delete my draft. Uh, another option, if I export image again, is that I could text it to myself. So I could bring up the messages here and then just send it to myself and then pick it up on my computer or send it to a friend. So it's easy to do it that way. Uh, tap it one more time, export image. Um, let's see, what all have we done? Let's see, we did message, we did mail, we saved the image, we printed. Another one is I have AirDrop turned on on my Mac. 
So I could use this little button up here at the top to actually transmit that to my desktop machine where I could then save it or I could print it from my computer. So that's another option. Some other things you might find here too, if you're using Dropbox, Dropbox is also an option. You could tweet it to somebody. You could use iCloud photo sharing. There are just a lot of different ways that you can use this. So that's a variety of them. You can explore the rest on your own, but this should get you started. Now there is one other thing that I wanna do with this, but I wanna save image, which will just save it to my iPad. Now I could also export something called a tile. So if I click on the camera and then export tile, this will just create a single, I guess, repetition of this. And I can save that, for example, here to my, my iPad or I could send it to my computer. But that in that case, I might use it for something like a, a fabric website, like Spoonflower. Um, I might use it in SketchUp as a wallpaper. So anything that I need to repeat, I can create basically a tile. And then last but not least, let me show you that once you've got this drawn, you can tap on these different patterns and see if anything else can be created from that design. So sometimes you'll get some really interesting designs by mixing it up a bit. All right. So in the next stage of this, we're going to try something else. We're going to delete this pattern and let's do a mandala. So I'll click on the trash can and now I'm looking for the flower that's right here on the lower right hand side, this little flower that if I toggle it, it turns blue. And this will give us the ability to draw a mandala very similar, similarly to what we just did. So in this case, I wanna to go to my settings again, and I want to turn on faint to show me the lines and then click the X. And I'll leave it on this first setting. So there's actually two different settings here for your mandala. Uh, I can also adjust the number of repetitions there, I guess, or the, the mirrors. And then let's start drawing. So I might do something like this. And on this one, I just chose the number four. So it will repeat it four times around the center axis or the center point. So I can draw something sort of like this that repeats four times around. But there is another interesting feature. If you go back to settings, there's something called design mode. It's down here towards the bottom. And if I use design mode, what will happen is it freezes this and I can increase the number and maybe double that. And when I do that, I can then come in and start doing a more complex design that has more repetitions around the center. And then as I sort of start to design that, and then let's say maybe I wanna go one more step, let's bump this up to 16. I can have an increasingly complex design as I get larger and larger here within the program. And so this is just one example. But let's clear this out. I'm going to turn off that design mode. So I'm going back to settings and let's turn off design mode. Close that by clicking on the X and bump this back down to a more reasonable number like eight. So I'll maybe make a design something like this, but I can also try this next button that's right next to the first mandala one and see if that changes it up a little bit and it does. So I could use this particular mode. Uh, if I wanted to change this one now that we're out of design mode, I could increase the number of repetitions here and see if I get a different design that I like. And then I could continue to draw with that. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, over on the right hand side also, we're working in a circular mandala like that. If you wanted to make this so it went all the way out to the edges and was square, you could switch it to this particular one here, or I could then maybe start designing from the outside as well. So it'll let me go all the way to the edge. So if I was making a card, or I've even used this to do puzzles, that's an easy way to do that as well. Um, can't think of anything else to tell you about this, except for it's a lot of fun. Uh, there is one other thing that we can do. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's turn off our symmetries. So I'll 
go here to my settings and turn off symmetries again and close this and let's take this out to another program so if you if you actually downloaded the bundle which included the the crafter um, option we'll go to the camera and let's look for 3d spirals spirals and more click on that and what it does is it launches I ornament crafter and then it also transfers my drawing I was just working on into this program and from here I can switch it to a kaleidoscope and then click on this little arrow and see what happens and so I can use this to create even more complex designs using what I just created now if I wanted to I could use this magnifying glass to increase the size of my drawing and then just move it around a bit see if you can make something that's more interesting you can also choose the different types of triangles so this one's more like a traditional kaleidoscope but that makes something altogether more complicated like that and then if I like this design I can use the same uh, method I did before but down here on the lower right hand corner I click this icon to export it and I can save that image out to my desktop or or to my you know computer or send it to the printer in fact that would be a nice one I could go ahead and say print and it's the same as the last one it's going to print that design if I'd like to go back to I ornament I can click the back arrow and then it shows me the icon I can tap on that and go right back to I ornament so that takes it to a whole nother level but what's nice about that is when I go look at the patterns that I just created I had my first design it was like this I had the other version of it which was a repeating field here's the tile that I could use in another program or here's the more complex version that I just created in the add-on which is I ornament crafter and then if you're really bored and you just don't have anything else to do let me get back into uh, IO crafter let's see I'll go spirals and more I'm back in the crafter I can also do something like a hyperbolic kaleidoscope where I can even make this more complicated and just play maybe grab, grab a glass of wine and make a really cool design um, I guess you could print that as well uh, another cool thing that you can do is you can make a solid ah it doesn't have the right symmetry but uh, you can create something like this where it makes a three-dimensional version and then by clicking on this arrow it will give you something that you can print and then cut this out and make an actual object so there's all sorts of weird stuff that you can do with this particular program but what I use it for again is mostly jewelry designs and uh, and getting those really cool patterns so hopefully this has been informative I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, I hope you go forth and make something beautiful